Pencils are one of the most essential stationary items we use today. Despite the ever-increasing use of computers, pencils have a long and interesting history because we humans love to write our little stories and document everything, and pencils come in handy for that. Here's a fun fact. An estimated 14 billion pencils are manufactured in the world every year. If you've ever wondered how pencils are made, well, there's no better time than now to learn about them. Pencils seem simple enough, but they actually require a lot of craftsmanship to ensure that they come out sturdy, sharp, and durable. The most important raw materials for making pencils are graphite, clay, and wood. Graphite is a naturally occurring crystallized form of carbon found in mines all over the world. A fun fact about graphite is that it can turn into diamonds if exposed to high pressures and temperatures. The clay used in making pencils is collected from deposits and quarries. It's crucial to get good quality clay because this determines the hardness and shade of the pencil. The wood most commonly used to make pencils is cedar, which smells pleasant and is sturdy enough not to lose shape, but soft enough to make sharpening easy. The first step in manufacturing pencils is preparing the core. Many people believe the pencil lead is made from actual lead, but that's not true. It's made from a combination of graphite, clay, and a little bit of water. The practice of mixing graphite and clay to make pencils was discovered by a chemist named Nicolas Jacques Conté. In the late 18th century, there was a shortage of graphite in France due to war blockades placed on France by Britain. Conté, also an officer in Napoleon's army, discovered that mixing powdered graphite with clay and forming the mixture into rods baked in a kiln was as effective in making pencils as using pure graphite. As they say, necessity is the mother of invention. Conte's revolutionary formula is still being used in pencil manufacturing today. So, the graphite and clay are placed in separate huge rotating drums with large rocks inside. These crush the graphite and clay into fine powders. The amount of clay and graphite used in pencils is not fixed. Sometimes there can be more clay, and other times, more graphite. The ratio, however, determines the hardness and darkness of the pencil. The more graphite, the darker the pencil, and the softer the lead. Next, the crushed graphite and clay are mixed in a drum with water. It usually takes up to three days for everything to be adequately mixed. The resulting sludge gets dried and re-crushed into a fine powder. Then the water is added and it's all blended again. This ensures the graphite and clay are evenly and thoroughly mixed. The final soft paste goes through a machine that shapes it into long thin rods. These rods are then cut to the lengths of the final pencils and baked inside an industrial oven at 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. This intense heat makes the lead smooth and hard, which makes it suitable for writing. The next step in pencil manufacturing is to encase the lead in wood. As we mentioned, the wood most commonly used in making pencils is cedar wood, and the best cedar for making pencils is around 14 years old, since they're usually mature enough to be cut down. One tree can make up to 300,000 pencils. Cedar logs are pre-cut in sawmills into slats called pencil stock or pencil squares. These slats are usually dried, stained, and waxed to ready them for production. Once they arrive at the factory, the slats are placed into a feeder that drops them onto a conveyor belt one after the other. As they drop on the conveyor belt, the slats pass under a giant cutting wheel that carves grooves into them. These grooves, eight per slat, will eventually hold the pencil lead. Still on the conveyor belt, the slats go through another machine that applies a thin coat of glue to them. This stage is important because the glue helps the lead stay in place so it doesn't break during production. Next, an automated arm puts the graphite rods into each groove of the glue-coated slats, turns them over, and then stacks another piece of wood on top, creating a graphite sandwich. But these sandwiches aren't quite sturdy enough yet. They must be placed into a metal clamp and squeezed with a hydraulic press with over 2,000 pounds of pressure, so they fit together snugly. The glue sets in about an hour, after which the slats are fed into a shaping machine that divides them into individual pencils. In dividing the pencils, a fast spinning cutter shapes them into the hexagonal design we're all familiar with. This design is preferred because it's easy to grip and doesn't roll off the table easily. After the pencils have been shaped and cut, they're sanded to smooth their surfaces. At this stage, the pencils are inspected individually for damages and anyone with a defect is discarded. The pencils can now be used to write if that's what you're after, but factories want to sell their pencils, so they have to make them look enticing. This brings us to the next stage, designing the pencils. A protective layer of varnish is first added to the pencils to improve their durability. Next, the pencils go under a shower head that sprays them with lacquer. Depending on the desired quality, sheen, and color, each pencil gets around 4 to 10 coats of lacquer. However, not all pencils get painted. Some are wrapped in little nylon wrappers with cool or fun illustrations. 
At this stage, most pencils get an image or text printed on their bottom side. It could be something like HB or H2, used for indicating the amount of graphite in the pencil. It could also be the name of the manufacturing company, or it could be any other design that the manufacturers wish to put on them. Pencils have a unique advantage in that they're easily erased when one makes a mistake. With this in mind, pencil manufacturers often add a rubber eraser to the end of their pencils. The genius who first thought of manufacturing pencils with erasers was Hyman W. Lippmann, who later sold his patent to Joseph Reckendorfer for reportedly $100,000 in 1872. Pencil erasers are usually made of synthetic rubber. The rubber is placed in a mill and repeatedly passes between large heated rollers. While this is going on, any pigments, fillers, and vulcanizing agent is added to the mix and thoroughly mixed again. The next step is vulcanization, which applies heat and pressure to the rubber compound to allow the cross-linking of polymer chains. This is done in specialized machines called vulcanization presses or vulcanizers. This transforms the raw rubber material into a more durable material, which results in more effective and elastic erasers. Next, plugs attached to the pencils are created using an extrusion process. This involves forcing the rubber mixture through a die to form a long cylinder, which gets repeatedly cut until it forms a cylindrical shape. A metal stopper called a ferrule is wrapped tightly around the other end of the pencil, that is, the end that will not be sharpened for writing. Finally, the eraser is inserted and secured. Now that the pencils are ready, the next step is for them to be packaged. In most pencil manufacturing companies today, packaging is automated, but some factories still do it manually. For the pencils that will be sent to retailers and wholesalers, the factory packages them in bulk quantities and sends them out for distribution in sturdy cardboard boxes. These boxes are designed to hold hundreds or even thousands of pencils in different sizes simultaneously. But pencils meant to go directly to consumers are packed in smaller quantities of individual pencil sets or packs. The pencils are neatly arranged in a cardboard plastic or blister pack that can also contain brand logos, product information, and barcodes. Now it's also important to know that while the wood, graphite, and clay combination pencils are the most popular, there are other variations of pencils. We have solid graphite pencils, for example, which are just solid sticks of graphite and clay without the wooden casing. Solid graphite pencils are about the same size and shape as wood graphite pencils. They're just covered with a wrapper or label. This type of pencil is useful for artists as it allows them to cover larger spaces faster and easier when drawing. There are also liquid graphite pencils, which work similar to pens. Rather than mixing with clay, the manufacturers mix the graphite with more water to make it ink-like. And of course, we have colored pencils. These have wax-like cores with different pigments and other fillers that make them perfect for coloring. So, now you know how pencils are made. But here's one more interesting fact. You know how most pencils are yellow? It's because the best graphite is said to be in China, where yellow is associated with royalty and respect. It also makes sense that China accounts for 44% of the pencils sold in the U.S. If you enjoyed today's video, like, share, and comment, and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this.